In this video, I want to show you how to take a solid body such as this Chevy logo and change the D curve it to and make it into a different radius. This one happens to be four and a half inches in radius, as you can see, but I need it at six inches. So I'm going to take it from a curved form to a flat and then curve it again at six inches. Let's get started. The first step is to create a arc sketch that fits up against the back of the of the uh, body. To do this I need a sketch and if you don't have a origin plane or work plane going through it you need to create one that has to be perpendicular to the back face. This one is perpendicular to it. I'll use it. Next thing I'm going to do is arc it around a little bit and I want to project this curve into the sketch. It has to be an intersect since it's a curve so I go to intersect, pick on the back surface, and there's my, make sure the project link is on at this point, and say OK. Next thing I'm going to do is draw me a curve, uh, arc, a center point arc, out in space, making sure it's long enough to cover the back of the uh, body. I'm then going to use my coincident constraint to hook the not the end, but the curve itself to the end point of this. Same thing down here. And then I'll use a, a concentric constraint to put them on top of each other like so. As you see, it's fully constrained. At this point, you can adjust the lengths of your curve if you need. You don't need too much hanging over. Next thing you want to do is do a very short sketch line on the end point and come out somewhat, make sure it's tangent. See the tangent symbol? If you can't get it by sketching, use the tangent constraint. The length of it makes no difference, just so you can see it very well. Finish your sketch. The next thing to do is go to your sheet model environment and pick up flange. In this case, the contour flange. Pick on your curve, push a little straight line, and I'm gonna go back to isometric to see it better. I'm going to drag it out and I'm going to change to symmetrical so it goes both ways at the same time. I'm going to go out about a one and a quarter inches. The sheet metal thickness makes really no difference what you're using. I'm using 16 gauge but it's not really critical as long as you can see it. Next thing you want to do is say OK to that and you have a sheet metal body in back of the solid body of your logo in this case turn the sketch off. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to join the two together. In the solid environment, pick on the combine command. Be sure you pick your sheet metal body first. Then your other body is your tool body and make sure you're doing a join. You now have one sheet metal component. The next thing, return to the sheet metal environment. Pick on modify, unfold. Pick on the flat area, and that's what the flat area was for previously. We could sketch a straight line. Pick that, it unfolds, say OK. Now, at this point, you have one body, but you have them joined together. You need to split them apart. So go back to the solid environment, go to the split body command, pick on the whole mass, pick your cutting tool as being this flat area. Make sure the checkbox is on and say OK. You now have two sheet metal bodies. At this point, you would like to go back to your sheet metal environment and refold. And you can, if you want to, either turn this off or you can right click and remove it if this is your final step. I'm going to go to six inches, so I'm going to use it over again in my next step. By the way, this process can be used to straighten out any curved body in a simple arc. I'm now going to get started on recurving it to 6 inch radius. My first step is to create a sketch on this old piece of sheet metal. I'll pick on it right there. Now I'm going to go to project geometry. And I want to take the link off. Make sure it's off. Pick on that short section and that section and say OK. At this point, you can turn the other body off so you don't, but it doesn't bother you. 
Looks like I missed the line, so let's try again with the project. Okay, there we go. Now I can turn the body off. Before you leave the sketch, you have two things to do. Put a tangent between this line and the curve. And also add your new radius, which is six inches. Remember, it's four and a half from the old one. It is now six. Finish your sketch. Go to isometric and create your contour flange again using the flange tool. Pick on both of them and move it out. I'm going to use symmetrical again to make it easy on me. I'm going to go to one and a quarter. Say OK. I just remembered I made a slight mistake in this contour flange or flange. I need to edit it. And you'll notice you'll probably possibly make this mistake too. I went to the wrong side. I need to be sure I'm on side two. I was on side one. It must be on the inside surface. So side two is correct. Check that or you'll not get the right radius. Next thing I need to do is go and unfold it. So unfold it, use the automatic checkbox and it works perfectly. You'll notice the graying out of the body. That's kind of a fusion thing. You can get it back if you want to by hitting opacity control on top of the body and go to 100%. It happens to be this one though. It'll come back later, but if you really need it right now, you can do it. Next thing I need to do is put this piece of sheet metal right on the back of the body. I'm going to go to the solid environment and use the align command. I find that it's very easy for me. Some people don't care for it, but I think it's very easy. Turn around and I'll hold down the control key and pick the center of that. It lines it up perfect. Now, I need to con combine these two together. So go to the combine tool. Pick on the sheet metal body as your target body first, then the other body and do a join. Next thing, go back to your sheet metal environment and refold. You'll get your cur new curve body. Last step, we need to remove this extra piece of sheet metal. We go back to solid environment, remove body, or excuse me, split body. Pick on the whole body, then the curve, automatic checkbox, and say OK. Now at this point, we need to get rid of the excess material totally from our model. Remember, you can remove it. You cannot delete it or you'll get an error. So I need to remove it. So there we have a, my logo all finished with a six inch radius as you can see. Hope this helps. Hope you do better work in Fusion 360.